Hello and welcome to what, why and how. In continuation with our series on PCA, in this video, let us understand the very important concept of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. I hope by now you are very familiar with what linear transformation means and why it is used. If not, I would highly recommend you to go back to the video on linear transformations in this series and at least have a look at it at 1.5x speed so that you get a sense of what that means and why it is used. Now we understand that when the linear transformation is applied in a coordinate space, the entire space gets manipulated. All the vectors in the space changes their direction, magnitude and all the shapes represented by those vectors get stretched or compressed or zoomed in, zoomed out, etc. Here we can see that the vectors 1, 0 and 0, 1 have changed the directions as well as magnitude. The square became a rhombus, the circle became an stretched oval and so on. But when a transformation is applied, not every vector might change in its direction. There are certain vectors which change only in magnitude but not in direction. Let us take an example of this transformation 3, 1, 0, 2. And let us concentrate on this vector 2, 1. This orange line represents the span of this vector 2, 1 or the direction which this vector 2, 1 represents. Now what happens when this transformation is applied on this coordinate space? You will see that the vector 2, 1 not only changed its direction, it rotated slightly towards the left, but also increased in its magnitude. Similarly, the basis vector 1, 0 also changed its direction, slightly moved towards the left and increased in magnitude. Let us look at another vector 1, 1 and see what happens when the same transformation is applied on this coordinate space and look at how vector 1, 1 transforms. If you follow the vector 1, 1, you see that the span of the vector remained the same. Only its length has increased or the magnitude has increased and vector 1, 1 became vector 3, 3 where the vector scaled up by 3 units. Similarly, if you hadn't already noticed, the basis vector in the y direction 0, 1 has also only scaled up to 0, 2. It, its magnitude increased by 2 units but its direction did not change. Such vectors which when a transformation is applied only change in magnitude but not in direction are called as the eigenvectors of this particular transformation matrix. Note that any vector which is a scaled up version of an existing eigenvector is also an eigenvector. For example, 0, 1 is an eigenvector, then 0, 2 is also an eigenvector, 0, 3 is also an eigenvector and they'll have the same eigenvalues which is 2 and therefore all these vectors when a transformation is applied also scale up by the same units. Similarly, 1, 1 is an eigenvector, then 2, 2 is also an eigenvector, 3, 3 is also an eigenvector and so on. But not every transformation might have an eigenvector. For example, you see this rotation transformation. All the vectors in this space rotate by 90 degrees and therefore every vector changes in its direction. Therefore, this rotation transformation doesn't have a real eigenvector. So basically, what we understand now is that when a transformation is applied on an eigenvector V, all that happens is that vector scales in magnitude by say lambda, where lambda is the eigenvalue of that particular vector. We will not go into detail of the derivation of the eigenvectors and eigenvalues, but basically the way you can derive it is, say if you assume A is a transformation matrix and V is the corresponding eigenvector, then AV is equal to lambda V, where lambda is the corresponding eigenvalues. This can also be written as lambda into I into V, where I is the identity matrix lambda i v minus a v is equal to 0, lambda i minus a into v is equal to 0. v we know is an eigenvector, it's a non-zero vector. Therefore, determinant of lambda i minus a should be is equal to 0. By solving this equation, we can calculate the values of lambdas and putting this lambda values back into this equation, we can calculate the eigenvectors. 
Now we understand eigenvectors and eigenvalues, but how are they useful? Eigenvectors have many uses in various different fields. Here, let's concentrate on how they are useful in linear transformations. When we talked about linear transformations, we said that linear transformations are very useful in multiple fields such as image processing, gaming, machine learning, etc., etc., where a particular transformation is applied hundreds of times in a particular coordinate system. For such large transformations to be less computationally intensive, we need the transformation matrix to be as simple as possible. Eigenvectors help in this scenario. We create a coordinate system which has the eigenvectors of that particular transformation as the basis vectors. Then in that coordinate system, the transformation matrix becomes very, very simple. Let us understand why. We understand from this equation that when a transformation is applied on an eigenvector, then the vector only scales. It doesn't change in direction. That is one important idea to remember. The eigenvector only scales. Second concept that we talked about is whenever a linear transformation is applied on a coordinate space, we can figure out where any vector lands by figuring out where the basis vector lands in that coordinate space. And the transformation matrix is defined as a matrix of column vectors where each column represents the vector at which the each basis vector lands after the transformation. Now let us assume a simple two dimensional coordinate system with two basis vectors v1 and v2 and assume that these two basis vectors v1 and v2 are the eigenvectors of this particular transformation t. Now when this transformation is applied in this coordinate system we know that all that happens is these basis vectors fill up by a particular value. v1 becomes lambda 1 into v1 and v2 becomes lambda 2 into v2. Now based on this, what is the transformation matrix in this new coordinate system be defined by these two basis vectors? The transformation matrix is nothing but the coordinates of the basis vectors after the transformation which is lambda 1, 0 and 0, lambda 2. If we extend this say to a three dimensional coordinate space, if we have the eigenvectors as v1, v2, v3, corresponding eigenvalues as lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3, then the transformation matrix for that transformation in a three dimensional coordinate space would be lambda 1, 0, 0, 0, lambda 2, 0 and 0, 0, lambda 3. Now you understand where we are going with this. If you create a coordinate system which has eigenvectors as the base vectors, transformation matrix corresponding to the transformation in this new coordinate system is always a diagonal matrix with the diagonals as the eigenvalues corresponding to those eigenvectors. Now from here you can understand that say if you have a normal transformation matrix is 3, 0, 1, 2 and if you want to apply this transformation 100 times that you have to take the power of 100 for this even for this simple two dimensional matrix this is very computational intensive now rather instead of applying this transformation in the standard coordinate system with standard basis if you change the basis to a create new coordinate system with the eigenvectors as the basis vectors then the transformation matrix corresponding to the new coordinate system would always be a diagonal matrix the eigenvalues across the diagonal and if you want to apply this transformation say 100 times it is much simpler it is as simple as scaling the eigenvalues by 100 times and this is computationally much less sensitive than applying this transformation 100 times now assume this happening in the n-dimensional coordinate space when n is equal to 10, 100. At such high level of dimensionality, performing a transformation in a particular coordinate system with eigenvectors as the basis vectors becomes much, much, much simpler than applying the transformation in a standard coordinate system. Therefore, instead of applying transformation on a vector, 
in a standard coordinate system. It's better if we transform the basis of the particular coordinate system to the eigenvectors and then apply the transformation in this new coordinate system. and then convert it back to the original basis if required and this makes the computation much much simpler and faster. I hope this gives an intuitive understanding of what eigenvectors mean, what eigenvalues mean and how they are useful in applying transformations. If you have any questions I would request you to put them in the comments and I would like to answer them to the best of my ability. Thank you.